Hey everyone, Anthony Fantano here, internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of the new Tame Impala record, Currents. Tame Impala is the recording project of producer, multi-instrumentalist, and songwriter, Mr. Kevin Parker, who burst onto the scene with this band just about five years or so ago with the debut full-length LP, Inner Speaker, an album which at the time received plenty of acclaim, though I personally wasn't that crazy about it, mostly because it kind of sounded like a Beatles cover band for the indie generation. I did not see the hype behind this LP, but Tame Impala's second full-length LP, Lonerism, that was another story. This album, in my opinion, was an improvement of everything Tame Impala had been doing just on all fronts. Better songs, better writing and melodies and guitar parts, better production with just more varied, colorful guitar tones, just a wider, fuller, more panoramic sound. Thought the vocals were a little better as well. Great drum sounds on this LP, great bass lines on this LP, and over time, Tame Impala sort of grew to sit atop this psych pop throne. They were the crown princes of the modern psych pop revival. However, they seem to be kind of passing the torch on this new record over here. Because what Kevin Parker and company deliver on this album is not just simply or purely psychedelic pop, they have a more synthetic sound this time around. There are more synths on this record than there are lead guitars. What? A thing changed? I don't like things changing. I don't like things changing. No changes. I don't like no things changes. changing. No. I don't like things Nothing. changing. Nothing. I don't like things Nothing changing. Nothing changes. I don't no. like things changing. Fight the change. I don't like things Fight changing. Fight the change. I don't like things changing. Well, it's not really that huge of a change. Guitar still plays a pretty significant role on this LP. Some key melodies and riffs are delivered via a guitar. But guitars are no guitars. I think Kevin's production style is still incredibly colorful, lavish, full, and really psychedelic. I think Kevin's use of synthesizers all over this record is really creative. There are, there are all sorts of glitches and effects and knob twisting that makes the synths on this LP sound really dynamic and just live in the moment, organic. And just like with Tame Impala's previous full-length LP, the bass lines on here are warm, they're groovy, the drums are really boomy and crispy. I think overall Kevin continues to grow his craft as a songwriter too. Like with songs on here such as the very sensual, ethereal ballad, Yes, I'm Changing, or the song Eventually, where I love the way this track's really booming, heavy lead guitar melody contrasts very nicely with the very sweet, soft, subdued verses, which are very dreamy. Mostly the synths on this LP are kind of an aesthetic change, and a good aesthetic change. I think throughout this record, Kevin Parker pulls together, he conjures a pretty wide array of sounds with these keyboards. If there are any deeper changes to the songwriting style of Tame Impala, it's on some cuts here where I'm hearing Kevin Parker incorporate like some new wave isms here and there. Take, for example, the song The Moment, where the beat and the keyboards on here sound like a weird, slightly musically altered version of Tears for Fears, Everybody Wants to Rule the World. But it's an incredibly catchy song in its own right, and I love the refrain on this track here, the Get it closer. The disco-tinged track, The Less I Know the Better, is pretty great too. And there are a few cuts in the track listing here that are short, little, dreamy, psychedelic palate cleansers that bring us from one hulking track to the next. I even like some of the extended cuts on this record, like the opening track, which goes through one musical phase after another, even one bit in the middle of the track where Kevin Parker just takes one loop and he just copies and pastes it into this groove that repeats over and over and over. He throws a low pass filter on it and it kind of sounds like I'm listening to a, an electronic dance music song. A lot of different genres informing this record. I think it's, in a way, Tame Impala's most stylistically diverse project yet. And even as Kevin Parker is just stretching these songs out into one phase after another, I think things stay really engaging, blissful, colorful, and fun, mostly because the instrumentals are great and the production is just, again, fantastic. This album, I think, has Kevin Parker's best production yet. Kudos. But I do have my issue with this album. And it's not really with the fact that things change stylistically on this record. I think things in a, in, in a way change for the better on this project. I'm not against the way that Kevin changed his, his sound on this project. My issue with the album is the vocals, really, on this record. 
track for track, Parker sings in the same nasal, passive falsetto every new indie band these days does because they think it'll get them a spot on the summer festival circuit. And of course these vocals are washed out in effects because <laughs> in what other way would they be listenable? Now it's not so bad that it makes me reel back from just one single listen to this album or one single listen to a song from this album, but it is so bad that it makes the album a little unbearable as it plods along. And it does make tracks like, cause I'm a man, kind of exhausting as Kevin sort of pushes the bearability of his falsetto. He does this as well on the song Past Life against some really weird, lowly pitched spoken word, which doesn't really feel like a great song as much as it is just a weird kind of filler moment. So there are moments on here where the vocals get kind of hard to swallow, or spots like Realities in Motion where the vocals are just so, I don't know, passionless, flavorless, just hanging in the background, just not really that engaging. And then we have the song Disciples around this same point in the track list, which is like this one minute and change song, which just kind of feels like an unfinished song, just kind of tossed in the middle of the track listing. There's a, just a really weird spot right after the halfway point of this record where almost every song feels really lackluster. Thankfully, the record ends semi-strong, though I was kind of disappointed that the last song just kind of low-key faded out out of nowhere, and that's just how this record says goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Strange record, definitely one of the more perplexing records of this year, and, and not because I think it's super experimental or super out there or anything like that. I'm just a little torn because there are moments of serious psych pop bliss on this album, mostly in the first half, which I think are fantastic. Some of Tame Impala's best material yet, and again, I don't really mind the stylistic change here, and I think the synths sound fantastic. Kevin Parker, some of the best production he's ever done. But then the record quickly loses focus just out of nowhere and not only delivers some very weak vocals, some overbearing vocals, but also a few just weird unfinished moments and a really strange experiment. And the record does redeem itself quite a bit after this point, but it's not exactly fireworks or anything like that. It's just a strange, slightly inconsistent listen but I mostly came out of this thing liking what I heard, and while I don't love this record as much as Lonerism, I think I'm more excited for Tame Impala's future because it's just great to see Kevin Parker taking risks. Kevin Parker has shown me that this project has more within it than I think we gave it credit for, even the fans, some of whom are not giving this change of pace here any credit whatsoever. So yeah, while I do see it as a flawed album, I thought it was pretty decent. I'm feeling a strong six to a light seven on this thing. Tran. Zishin, have you given this record a listen? If you have, what do you think about it? Do you love it? Do you hate it? You might hate it. And if you do, why? And what do you think I should review next? Anthony Fantano, Tame Impala, forever.